Tovar, congratulations on the new job. And I'm curious because pitchers and catchers report a little over a month from now, how jump fast do you have to just jump in and get things going with the Yanks? Well, that's a great question. First of all, thank you for having me here. But um, excited to be with the Yankees, excited to be able to work. As you saw, Brian Savian and uh, you got, you know, Brian Cashman, of course, who's a friend. And the staff is put together there with all the people with all, Gene Afterman and, and everybody else and, uh, and Jim Hendry. But, uh, you know, it, it takes time. I, I've been in an organization, you know, it takes a little bit of time to kind of be able to get adapt to the organization. What I want to probably be doing early on is going to be listening a lot. Um, but here we are getting close to spring training. And, uh, you know, that's the major league uh, team. And, of course, you know, I've been, because of the past couple of years being in New York, I've seen the team. I've been able to keep an eye on the team, follow the team. But, you know, what I do is not only major league, but it's also minor leagues and scouting. It's going to take a little bit of time. But you know what? An organization like the Yankees, that's being run so well for so many years, I feel pretty comfortable. It will, it will take some time, but it won't take that long to, for me to adapt to it. Omar, you did a Zoom conference call this afternoon where you mentioned that Brian Cashman had courted you in the past and had tried to get you to work for the Yankees in the past. What made the timing right about signing on with the Yankees this time? Well, Jack, like we were talking before, it, to me, the timing was with, you know, Cash, you know, has always uh, had interest in me working for him. Um, but, you know, really, the last, he asked permission in March, I, I turned it down, not so much because of the Yankees, not so much because of, for me, it's an honor to work with the Yankees, is that I had committed to Major League Baseball, to the commissioner's office, uh, to be involved in a lot of their new initiatives. It was early on, you know, baseball, uh, the commissioner's office uh, had a lot of great new initiatives uh, domestically. Uh, you're talking about the combine that was a success uh, in San Diego. Uh, you're talking about uh, college pre-draft leagues, post-draft leagues, college leagues. And then, of course, the thing that was really hanging over that was the international draft. As you know, the last agreement, um, uh, the basic agreement, there was a quote uh, for, you know, they put it, they tabled the, the, the international draft till July uh, or late July. And I was working on that, and I still feel comfortable and good that I'm still working on that for Major League Baseball. But it wasn't the right time for me to leave Major League Baseball uh, because I committed to them, and I didn't want to leave them uh, and committing to them in all the projects that were being done having the great opportunity to work with, uh, you know, with the people in Major League, with Morgan Sward, with John DeAngelos and Rebecca Cecil. It's, uh, it was, uh, I couldn't do that at the time. Well, so many folks know you've had so many important jobs, but I do want to focus on last year. Everything that you've just said, working with Major League Baseball, you're a guy that's willing to learn. How could that even help the Yankees or impact them in 2023 and beyond? Well, I think you're right. I think it's very important. The way the game is today, uh, a lot of the things that are, uh, you know, especially the commissioner's office, a lot of the things that are being done, initiatives and all those things, I think they can be of help uh, for me in helping the Yankees. I think that knowledge of, uh, you know, of how the system works and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the game is more centralized right now as far as scouting and development. But that's been going on for many times, whether it's combines and, you know, all these things, even though combines in baseball, you've only been gone on for two years. Uh, but for me, I feel that, you know, having that broad experience, that versatile experience can be of help uh, for the Yankees. Omar, you started your career as a scout with the Texas Rangers. You were instrumental in signing Sammy Sosa. We know how the game has changed. What are some of the keys for an organization to be able to blend scouting with analytics? I think both. I think both. I think I think the question is, no, how do you use the information? You know, what? How much weight you give the information to certain areas? Uh, I think I think it's a good, I think it's great that the game has so much knowledge. We have so much, you know, uh, knowledge as far as data. Uh, now, some places the data maybe you know less important than others you know i, I think baseball is in a great sp sp space right now uh, of uh, combining data combining the human element and I'm, I'm listen there's no doubt i am a traditional scout but i am also one that i've been around and i've been i've hired so i think some pretty good data people and i don't like throwing names around but i can't help but throw tj barrett names around who's the head guy for the milwaukee bucks and he was with the match for many years i just think there's so many 
so many good young people in the game, good young minds in the game, you know, and the blend of that, bringing that together, is this, it's why you see successful organization. I think when you look at the successful ones right now, I think the Yankees are one. When you look how many wins they've won, I think you look at the Dodgers, I think you look at the, at the Braves, I think you look at uh, Houston. They're organizations that they don't, you don't lean one way or the other. You can lean one way or the other. If you're missing, you could, but I don't think that's smart. So let me ask you this. It sounds like a simple question. What makes a good scout? But beyond that, you're a great talent evaluator. I don't want you to toot your own horn necessarily, but simply put, what makes a great scout? Well, I'm going to tell you what I was taught by some very senior guys. They said, you know what makes a good scout? When you, when you pick a player and the player can't play, you have another player for me the next day. <laughs> good scouts are the ones that keep on throwing, giving you players. And I'm telling you what, I have a lot of... Over the years, I've signed some good ones, but most of the time, if you're honest with yourself, is when, you, when you, that player doesn't pan out, you better have another one and have the guts to say, I got like this guy. That's what makes a good scout. Omar, you have prided yourself at times as being the guy who you said is the contrarian in the room, maybe has the opinion that some of the other people sitting at the table don't have. How important it is to be that person, and when you do have the contrary opinion, to make sure you still push hard for it? Well, I think the key to that, Jack, is simple, okay? You can only have so many contrarians in the room. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I've been a contrarian. I've been, you know, Jack, I've always taken pride. I mean, over the years, whether it was recommending a Tino, a Timo Perez, and nobody expected that, or Melvin Mora, or, you know, whether it was going to be a, a, a you know, a, 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 I'm trying to think of guys that over the years that were guys that were off the beaten track, guys that were at the, you know, at the end of a thing. You know, you take Jake, you take Jake DeGrom in the sixth round, those things are off, you know, contrarian's ideas. You take, he was a shortstop and you make him a pitcher, you know? And for me, the most contrarian's idea of all, and it's a great story for me, and it's not that we were smart, it's just sometimes you're lucky, is uh, R.A. Dickey. I mean, R.A. Dickey was like, the, he was the 11th pitcher on a 10-man staff and, <laughs> and, uh, with, with the Mets in AAA, he ended up, having a great career after that. Yeah, that worked out great. DeGrom obviously did, and I'm glad you brought him up, Omar, because he's now with the Texas Rangers after moving there in the offseason. They've made some tremendous signings and moves. We know the Astros have been a challenge for the Yankees. Blue Jays have made some solid moves. How do you think the Yankees this offseason have positioned themselves going into 2023? I think outstanding. I think outstanding. First of all, it's a 99-win team. Let's be honest. And let's and let's when you look back at the Yankees, I mean, it's a 99-win team, and then the bullpen went south. Injuries for Booney to win 99 games for that front office to keep it together. I mean, earlier on, and, and guys, remember we were talking about this team being, you know, the 98 Yankees, and they got hurt. So that team got hurt and won 99 games. Now, don't get me wrong, but I think the acquisitions that have been done, I think when you look at, first of all, you got judge side, and then you, you add Rondon to the mix, and I think, you know, listen, it's about pitching. I'm a big believer. You win with pitching, and I think the game, you got to be athletic. I think the Bader, having Bader with the team uh, all year helps, because, listen, I, was, I remember talking to Cash throughout the years, and, my God, you know, you're keeping this guy in center field, judging center field, you know, all year. You, this guy all it takes is one tweak, big body, uh, and now you're gonna have you're gonna have Judge and Wright. You got Bader, uh, so I like the team. I still believe pitching, and I believe in talking to Cashman that the team is not done in acquiring talent and uh, acquiring. But to me, if we get that bullpen back the way it was the first half, watch out.